Welcome back everybody. Today we are gonna do some raking with the Dirt Dog Landscape Rake, the 4720. We're gonna have some fun. As always, we are proud to be sponsored by Boro Wheel Spacers. I'll tell you, we put them to the test today. We had to take this tractor. It's its first time on this side of the property, the west end. But we were way over on the east end and there was a lot of weave and in and out and uneven terrain. This really helped with the stability factor. So if you're looking to enhance your stability, I would encourage you to check out Bora. Hey, and if you end up enjoying this video, I would love to get a thumbs up from you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already to check out more tractor videos. And if you want something for your tractor, check out goodworkstractors.com. So let me tell you what we have going on today. We have a dirt Dirt Dog 84 inch wide landscape rake behind the John Deere 4720 tractor. You can see this is quick hitch compatible. Dirt Dog, we carry their full line of attachments. They're made in the USA down in Georgia. Some products are made in America with a mixture of domestic and foreign parts. Just depends what it is. Uh, we can ship all of their attachments all over the country. We did some video earlier this summer going over a 60 inch landscape rake by Dirt Dog behind the John Deere 1025R. We did some, um, some trail grooming and we're gonna do a little bit of that today as well. This is a pretty big tractor to take down some trails so it could get a little interesting. That was definitely the case on the way over here from one side of the property to the other. It took us a solid 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes to get over here. I think we ended up scraping uh, the wheel weights that are sticking out along a pine tree as well, but we made it. You may recognize the area that we're standing right now which was just freshly mulched, freshly cleared. That's what it looked like just last week. It was a complete overgrown tangled jungle which has its own benefits, but I wanted to have a little pocket here that was opened up and cleared out. I want to plant a food plot. I had this wild idea. We're going to see if it works, but I want to do something I've never done before, which is to plant a food plot without ever tilling the ground. This is not going to be tilled ground. The only thing we've used is the mulcher head and it got it down to basically bare dirt. And then we raked this half. We're not raking that half. We're going to see if that makes a difference. I'm going to come back through with that casco cedar that we used previously. We'll slit the ground. It'll drop the seed, roll it in with a cultipacker, and we'll come back this fall, we'll see what it looks like. We'll see what it looks like in the spring as well. I had a bunch of leftover seed from the plots on the other side of the property, primarily winter rye and clover seed, which winter rye is one of the easiest germinating seeds that there is out there. It's different from rye grass, but rye grass also germinates very easily. We're gonna plant that out here. The winter rye and the clover should still grow even though it's early October, I think we'll be okay. But the other benefit is that it's gonna green up really quickly and already have that established base next spring. And so we should have a pretty well established clover plot in here by that point. And then the rye will act as a good cover crop while that gets established and then die off. So what we've done is we've raked half of this plot here and then the other half we're leaving unraked. And the idea behind raking this is there was a lot of while it is mulched up pretty well, a lot of big chunks of wood, and I didn't want that to um, prevent germination or the cedar from coming through. So we're gonna see if that makes a difference down the road, raking versus not raking. So if you wanna see the results, make sure you hit subscribe. Now, fingers crossed, if this works like I hope it does, this could be a real time saver when planning a food plot from scratch. So a landscape rake is a pretty unique tool, and I think it's, um, it's very handy in the right application. It's gonna to be too aggressive for a lawn. For the most part, it's just gonna to wanna to rip out chunks of sod. We did a video on a dethatcher, which is a very light duty, spring tooth tine type of rake that's good for actually dethatching your lawn or scarifying to seed in the fall or collecting leaves. Um, a lot of light applications where this is gonna be more aggressive. The landscape rake is gonna be at home off of the residential turf. So if you're in a field or we just put it in a driveway recently out here at the property, the other side and I use this along both edges of the driveway to kind of get the the leftover chunks of grass and sod and and uh, roots and whatnot that were just kind of piled up over the whole development. A landscape rake could also be used for regrading, resurfacing a driveway. You know, if you didn't want to use a box blade or a land plane because you didn't need to take it down that deep and resurface, but just kind of skim the top, a landscape rake could do a great job re-leveling that out for you. But really, just think of it like a rake, you know, instead of doing it by hand, it's anything that you would do with a rake, you can do with one of these. You may have to take a couple of passes, we had a lot of debris out here and you're gonna see us go over it two or three times. It'll kind of skip up over tops of piles as well. We did a lot of playing around with this hydraulic top link to, 
to change the pitch of it forward and backward, see if that made a difference. For me, that pitch or that adjustment and angle didn't really make a difference either way. I'll say a downside is if I had it pitched too far back, when I went to lift up on the three point hitch, the bottom of the rake didn't want to lift up over the pile and that was kind of inconvenient. So there are a couple of features, one standard and one optional on the landscape rake. And now you can angle these. You're gonna have a pin here that you can pull out. You can adjust it one way or the other, or even do a complete 180 and push back with the rake if you want to. So for me, and all the different applications in a big area like this, cleaning it up, whether it's been on trails, uh, cleaning those up, or even going along the driveway, I haven't found a time when angling it while using it is actually very practical. However, I did find myself turning this at an angle while we were going down the pathway just to get to this part of the property. Like I mentioned, we actually hit the wheel weights on a tree because that's how tight of a space it is and I didn't want any part of the rake hanging out further than the tires. So the optional feature that you can get is a gauge wheel kit so that you maybe don't get too aggressive and you're more consistent on your depth while you're raking along. Again, for me, I have not come across an opportunity or an application where where that would be beneficial. I suppose perhaps if you are doing final seed prep in your lawn or maybe on a driveway or a ball diamond where that very consistent grade or cut is, is critical, perhaps it would come into play then, but for me, I have yet to find such a thing. Now with a landscape rake, you know, I don't even stock a 48 inch wide version. Uh, 60 inches is the narrowest that I will stock and that's for the subcompact tractors. One of the reasons for that is it's not like a tiller or a brush hog or a box blade that is going to put a bigger load on the tractor. This is just kind of riding along the surface of the ground, not putting much strain on it. Um, the only time that you really want to be concerned with the width is if you have a restriction, like going down a pathway in the woods Maybe you have to get through gates. Again, you can angle this to get through certain scenarios and, and get to your final destination. Now for me, having an eight or a nine foot rake on this tractor would have been pretty good as well. But one thing to keep in mind with a landscape rake is that this entire surface, the entire rake is gonna be on one plane. It's all fixed and tied together. So if you are on an uneven surface, you know, you have a lot of bumps and dips, the bigger you are, the more potential to have those uneven areas, and that's gonna be less ground contact, which can make more work for you in the end. So you're also gonna see this WorkSaver double jaw grapple in today's video. This is gonna be a six foot wide grapple. It's great for the four series tractors, your Kubota L series tractors. It's built very stout. WorkSaver is made right in Illinois and these grapples, I've been selling them for quite a few years. I have yet to have a warranty claim on them. They make some really good products down there and that's why I continue to carry them. Now these grapples are available in a John Deere quick attach or a skid steer quick attach connection for Kubota tractors and Coyote, Mahindra, and the list goes on, or again with a John Deere. You can get a five foot version as well, but the difference with the five foot version is you're gonna have one a little bit wider center top jaw. It's not gonna have two, it's just gonna have one wider center top jaw. Now for those of you with the smaller compacts and subcompact tractors, something like this is gonna be way too heavy for your machine. WorkSaver does have some very lightweight, light duty grapples that are hovering around the 200 pound mark that are a perfect fit for your tractors we sell those as well you know so this is really more of a general purpose grapple you could use it to grab logs big piles of brush if you want to today we're actually going to use it to kind of push along and drive big bunches of debris all this stuff that we're standing on right now on the other side you're going to see it in action just kind of shoving it and pushing it along into the corners of the fields you could scoop it up and move it around if you wanted to there are some big slots in here though so for our purposes today Day, kind of shoving it along like a shovel works best.
Hey guys, well that's gonna wrap it up for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. Maybe there's something I should have done differently. Maybe you have a bit of advice to help somebody else out. Remember, if you wanna see the results of what this half looks like compared to this half, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want something for your tractor, maybe a grapple, maybe a rake, maybe something different, make sure you check out goodworkstractors.com. Thanks again for stopping by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.